Next up, healthcare. You know, that thing that keeps you from dying. Well, less and less so these days, but there's a reason for that, and we'll get to it. But first, I want to paint you a picture. Canada's healthcare system is in a state of collapse. Emergency room wait times are ballooning, as are surgical wait times. Over 6 million Canadians don't have access to a family doctor. There are so many different healthcare indicators that are sounding alarm bells, but perhaps the most shocking is life expectancy. Over the last three years, life expectancy in Canada has dropped by a full year. In Saskatchewan, where I'm from, it's dropped to 78.5 years, two years less than the national average, although it feels like longer since you live in Saskatchewan. And to be clear, this is because people are dying at higher rates at all phases of life. It is really, really bad, and the trend is getting worse. Why? Because healthcare is a provincial responsibility, and most of the premiers are either corrupt, incompetent, or both. You see, healthcare in Canada is being destroyed on purpose and then privatized by tiny steps. Privatization will create two classes of healthcare, and as such, it'll create two classes of Canadians those who have access to healthcare and those who don't. And if you think that your access to a basic human right like healthcare should depend on your ability to pay for it, then I, I really can't help you. Have you considered caring about other human beings? Do you need a hug? So how are the premiers breaking healthcare? Well, it happens through a few steps, and I'm going to use what's happening in my home province of Saskatchewan to illustrate, but I think you'll find most provinces are at some step in this process. So follow along and witness the breaking of a system and where it leads next. Try and spot where your province is. It's a fun game if you forget that it's about human rights. So in 2007, the Saskatchewan party came into power. They were fairly moderate conservatives for the most part, led by Brad Wall. Pictured here, wearing a suit that says, This time, I'll finally defeat the Batman! At that point, surgical wait times were quite long, for a variety of reasons, but most of them trace back to a prior NDP government that was growing very long in the tooth. So the Sask party set up the Sask Surgical Wait Times Initiative to lower wait times. They sought to cap wait times at 18 months. How? Well, rather than building public capacity, they focused on the private sector, contracting out services to private providers. And they've honestly never really answered the question of why. Like in this hilarious email interview where they've been asked directly and they sidestep the question entirely. Pause to read. Or don't, I'm not your boss. So, with the Surgical Wait Time Initiative, the path was laid out. Establish the private sector as the solution to the problem and then turf people to the private system. There, the staff are paid less, they often don't receive benefits or pensions, and they're often significantly worse off than those in the public sector. Outcomes are also worse. Now, there isn't a ton of data comparing outcomes between private and public healthcare, but this 2012 study found no evidence that private healthcare provided better outcomes, and in many cases, the quality of care and training of the practitioners was worse. So why build up private instead of public? Well, it's pretty simple. Money. For example, Surgical Centers, Inc., which has gotten over $10 million in contracts from the SAS government, has also, and I'm sure totally coincidentally, donated $19,300 to the SASC party. It is bonkers how cheaply our government can be bought. Honestly, they sold out our healthcare for the price of a 2021 Nissan Versa. But I mean, it's blue, so I get it. With the private healthcare surgery initiative, wait times came down, but then the SASC party rolled out a second phase in their plan, lean. It was essentially an organizational review to trim the fat. The problem is, in the view of the lean program, the fat was funding proper staffing and healthcare capacity, as well as patient comfort. It led to a huge reduction in the healthcare capacity in the province, and it was a catastrophe, costing over $1,500 for every $1 it saved. But more than that, it broke the back of our healthcare system, leaving the private clinics carrying much of the weight. Essentially, the SAS party government broke down the public system while shifting funding to the private system by paying inflated prices for each procedure. The problem is, those clinics are here to make money, and the SAS party simply isn't paying enough for it to be profitable, and there are rules in the Canada Health Act to prevent governments from just giving carte blanche to these clinics to charge whatever they want to the individuals or government. So where are things at now with the Surgical Wait Time Initiative in Saskatchewan? Well, wait times are ballooning. We have the longest wait times in the country for knee and hip replacements, over 466 days. For comparison, national average is 190 days. Imagine losing a whole year of your mobility just because the SAS party is useless. I honestly don't even have to imagine. This happened to my father-in-law. He had to wait months upon months in constant pain waiting for treatment. Thank goodness he's gotten excellent care since then and is doing well, but he shouldn't have had to wait so long and go through that pain. So Saskatchewan has a plan. They're sending surgical patients to another province. I am 100% serious. They've done such a bad job of building capacity in our healthcare system that they failed to build any meaningful capacity and lost hundreds of staff. They are sending surgical patients to Calgary and massively overpaying for the surgeries. And you'll be shocked, shocked I say, when you learn what I'm about to tell you. The clinic that the SAS party government selected to send those surgeries to? 
They're run by that very same donor that gave the SAS party government $19,300. The value of a nice jet ski. And who wouldn't trade healthcare for a jet ski? They're so fast. And it's just such a crazy random coincidence that the major political donors keep getting major contracts. Random AF. And that's not the only shady connection. You see, as the Saskatchewan government fails to provide surgeries, they're also failing to provide mammograms. The wait list grew to over a year, and so the SAS party government leapt into action. Did they add mammogram staff? Raise their pay from the current $39 an hour to the $45 an hour they could be making in other provinces? Nope. They're just paying to send those people to Calgary for mammograms at a clinic run by Surgical Centers, Inc. Like, these are not hard breadcrumbs to connect, folks. It's pretty obvious what they're up to. They're paying more than 10 times more to get mammograms done in Alberta than it would cost in the public system. So we get to overpay for the luxury of having to drive eight hours on a highway that is essentially a straight damn line. So you may be asking yourself, how is the SAS party overpaying for all of this care? Aren't there rules? You'd be right. But only when you're paying for care within your own province. They can't wildly overpay private centers in Saskatchewan for procedures. But you know who they can overpay? Out of province centers. So that's the loophole they're using. They're running a scam, possibly even a scamola, and they're using public funds to do it. And even when they're doing the work in the province, it's a disaster. Saskatchewan rolled out private MRIs on a paid basis using a one-for-one -one system. If someone paid for a private MRI, the fee would also have to fund an MRI in the public system, which the clinic would have to also provide. The idea was to create a paid fast lane, but for that to work, you need to create an incentive for people to use it. They had to extend wait times. So they underfunded and understaffed public MRIs, left it to the private clinics, and let wait times grow to drive demand and get those MRIs off the public books. And it's led to a surge in wait time. Before the program started, the mean wait time was 58 days. Now it's 96.3. As you can see, privatization is working great. Governments are pushing healthcare off a cliff while quietly building up private clinics and labs in order to offload their responsibilities and enrich their donors. Healthcare workers are quitting in droves and governments are filling the gaps with incredibly expensive travel nurses instead of paying and supporting healthcare workers. And lots of folks in the public are blaming unions and staff for what's happening, but that's ridiculous. If you have a shortage of people willing to work in the current conditions for the current pay, then you need to improve conditions and pay. That's just basic economics. But it's important to remember that the working conditions of healthcare staff are the healthcare conditions of the public. It's the quality of our hospitals, which are critically underfunded. But we've accepted them having to fund themselves through lotteries and fundraisers instead of tax dollars that are being flipped to private clinics. It's happening everywhere in Canada. Saskatchewan's just leading the way, and it is breaking our healthcare system. It's got nothing to do with patients.